This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service that screens a variety of beautiful, critically acclaimed cinema from all around the world. Get a free month at mubi.com slash in-depth cine. Shooting on film in both photography and in the world of cinema has seen a bit of a resurgence in recent times. After the release of capable high-end digital cinema cameras like the Arri Alexa in 2010, many may have thought that the era of shooting movies photochemically was done and dusted. However, over a decade later, motion picture film still exists. But unlike in photography, where there are still quite a few different films to choose from, in the world of motion picture film, there's only one commercially mass-produced category of color negative film that remains from one company, Kodak Vision 3. So let's use this video to examine the last remaining range of film stocks, go over how to choose the right film, how to identify each stock's specifications based on the label of their film can, and talk about the visual characteristics that contribute to the shot on Kodak look. When cinematographers shoot on film, there are three basic criteria that will inform what film stock they choose to shoot on. The gauge, the speed, and the color balance. First, you need to decide what gauge or size of film you will shoot on. This may be determined on the basis of budget or due to a stylistic choice based on the look of the format. The four standardized film sizes to choose from are 8mm, 16mm, 35mm and 65mm. The smaller the width of the film is, the less of it you'll need to use and the cheaper it'll be, but the less sharpness, clarity and more grain it will have. The larger the width of the film, the more you will need, the more expensive it'll be and the higher fidelity and less grain it'll have. Next, you'll need to decide on what film speed you want to shoot at. This is a measurement of how sensitive the film is to light and is comparable to EI or ISO on a digital camera. Basically, the more light you're shooting in, the lower the film speed needs to be. So bright sunny exteriors can be shot in a 50 speed film, while dark interiors need to be shot in a 500 speed film. Finally, films come in two color balances daylight and tungsten. This refers to the colored temperature of the light source that they are designed to be shot in. So when shooting under natural sunlight or with film lights like HMIs that have a color temperature of approximately 5500 Kelvin, it's recommended to use a daylight stock. When shooting with warmer tungsten light sources, a tungsten balance film should be used to get to the correct color balance. As a side note, it is still possible to shoot a tungsten film like 500T in cooler sunlight. Kodak recommends using a warm 85 filter and exposing the film at 320 instead of 500. However, some cinematographers like Sayombu Mukdiprom prefer to shoot tungsten stocks in daylight without an 85 filter and then warm up the processed and scanned images to the correct color balance in the color grade. Within the Kodak Vision 3 range, there are four remaining film stocks in production. Two daylight balance stocks, 50D and 250D, and two tungsten stocks, 200T and 500T. One of the best ways to further unpack the technical side of what makes up a film is to look at the information on the label that comes with every can. The biggest and boldest font is how we identify what kind of film it is. This is broken into two parts. 50 refers to the film speed or EI that it should be metered at. So cinematographers shooting a 50 EI film will set the ISO measurement on their light meter to 50 to achieve an even or box speed exposure of the image. D refers to daylight, so this is a daylight balanced film. The second part, 5203, is a code to identify what type of film it is. Every motion picture film has a different series of numbers that is used to identify it. So 35mm Kodak Vision 3 50D is 5203. 8622 is 16mm Fujifilm Super F 64D. 
7219 is 16 mm Kodak Vision 3 500T. It's crucial that all kinds of film that are shot are labeled with this code when sent to the film lab for development so that the film can be identified and developed at the correct box speed. This brings us to the next text, develop ECN2. This refers to how the film needs to be developed. ECN2 development is basically the same process of passing the film through a series of chemical baths as C41, which is used to process color negative film in photography. However, it also includes an extra step where the remjet layer on the Vision 3 film is removed. Remjet is used to minimize the halation of highlights and decrease static from the film quickly passing through the camera at 24 frames per second. Next, we have a table that indicates how the film should be exposed in different lighting conditions. Under Daylight, no extra filters are required and the film can be exposed with an EI or ISO of 50. When shooting with a 3200 Kelvin tungsten light source, Kodak recommends using a cooling ATA filter, which changes the light from 3200 Kelvin to 5500 Kelvin or Daylight. Adding this filter lets through less light, so in this situation Kodak recommends exposing the film with an EI of 12. This 35 means that the film comes in a 35mm gauge width. These numbers refer to the kinds of perforations it has on the sides of the film. And the final important number refers to how many feet of film the roll contains. When shooting on 35mm the most common roll length is 400 foot which is used for lighter camera builds, but 1000 foot rolls can also be used in larger studio magazines that allow filmmakers to roll the camera for longer before needing to reload. There's a good reason why many DPs who shoot on digital cinema cameras still try to create a Kodak look for footage using a LUT or in the color grade. Whether it's the result of the long legacy of shooting movies on film, or whether it's just that filmic color is actually more visually appealing, the film look remains sought after. However, it's important to remember that the look of film has changed over the years due to the methods used by manufacturers. For example, many iconic Hollywood films from the 70s that were shot with the famous 5254 have a more neutral, crushed, grainy look than modern Vision 3. Also keep in mind that modern productions shot on film are all scanned and then graded in post, so the color in the final file may be different depending on how much the colorist remained true to, or strayed from, the original color in the negative. Kodak film has always been considered rich, with good contrast and warmer than Fujifilm, which has more pronounced blues and greens. As it's the most modern, the Vision 3 range is the cleanest looking motion picture film stock produced. The most sensitive of the bunch, 500T, has very low grain even when push processed. For this reason, filmmakers who seek a deliberately high grain textured image these days regularly opt to shoot in 16mm rather than the lower grain 35mm. The colour produced is on the warmer side which helps to create beautiful, rich looking skin tones that are more saturated than Kodak's older Vision 2 stock. Vision 3 film also has a big dynamic range of approximately 14 stops, which is more than older films. This means that when it's scanned and converted to a digital file, the colorist is able to do more with it, such as use power windows to recover highlights from overexposed areas. As a colorist, my job is to try to build a good contrast level yet keep the detail in the lowlights. I find that the 5219 stock was designed so that I can have that contrast and the detail as well without having to do anything extra like power windows to pull the detail out. What I especially love about the film is how it renders the highlights with a subtly blooming halation effect and how it renders detail in a way that is not overly sharp. With modern post-production color, it's possible to almost exactly replicate this look with digital footage. You can get almost identical colors. You could add scans of film grain on top of the image, but to me, what is still not achievable in post is recreating how film renders details in an organic way that digital technology is still not able to recreate. 
Since you're watching this video, it probably means that like me, you're a big fan of filmmaking and cinema. If you're looking for a streaming service that has a great collection of older art film classics, hard to find documentaries and contemporary work from modern auteurs, look no further than the sponsor of this video, Mubi. At the moment, Mubi is running a festival focus on Locarno that features a selection of prior films from the prestigious Swiss festival. One of the highlights is the highly acclaimed Three Colors trilogy film, Blue, a complex, visually stunning piece of cinema that's particularly relevant to this video as it was shot on 35mm Kodak film. These kinds of festival features are what make Mubi my favorite curated streaming service. If you're a lover of critically acclaimed art house movies, Mubi is the site for you. Every day they curate as premiere new hand-picked film from different places around the world, which means you'll never run out of interesting films to watch or struggle to make a viewing choice. Their film pages also feature reviews from critics, users and an online publication if you'd like to expand your cinema knowledge or dive deeper into film analysis. You can try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash indepthcine. That's mubi.com slash indepthcine for a whole month of great cinema for free. So that brings us to the end of this video. As always, a final thanks to all the kind patrons who keep the channel going with their support and receive these videos early and free of ads. Otherwise, until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.